I figured I would start, you know, speaking of science, you know, in case we all forgot, this past week has really reminded us that we've, we're in an urgent climate crisis that is only getting worse. You have a brutal heat wave in the Northwest, a heat wave in the Northeast. You, you see uh, videos now of infrastructure literally melting because of the heat, and you have the ocean literally on fire. So we need all hands on deck to address the climate issue, and we need to consider all options available. And so in this spirit, I kind of want to highlight a recent article by Jackman founding and editor Bhaskar Sankar that was in The Guardian recently, where he makes the case for nuclear energy to be a big component of the way we cut CO2 emissions. So this is, of course, very controversial topic among the left um, and the environmental movement. And I'll admit, you know, I'm not that knowledgeable about this kind of stuff. And for a long time, I believed that nuclear really is just too dangerous to be thought of as a major way to combat climate change. But my thinking has changed and evolved on this over time. And I think we should seriously consider some of the points in this article. So, you know, this article comes on the heels of the um, Indian, Indian Point nuclear power plant in New York being shut down. So for years, that plant provided the vast majority of New York City's carbon-free energy, not to mention it employed a lot of unionized workers. So since it got shut down, there's already been a in big increase in CO2 emissions. So in the article, he points out the first full month without the plant has seen a 46% increase in the average carbon intensity of statewide electric generation compared to when Indian Point was fully operational. New York replaced clean energy from Indian Point with fossil fuel sources like natural gas. And we see similar trends in countries like Germany, where a very powerful environmental movement has forced the phasing out of nuclear plants. But the problem is this energy is being replaced by fossil fuel sources and leading to more CO2 emissions, not less. And so in the article, Bhaskar claims that it's very hard to develop wind and solar to capacity without a foundation in nuclear energy. He claims there are just a handful of large economies that have already mostly decarbonized their grids. All of them have a foundation of nuclear or hydroelectricity or both. And then to greater or lesser degrees, add renewables like wind and solar on top. This is because nuclear and hydro are able to provide the electricity whenever we need it. There's also encouraging evidence that he talks a little bit about in the article as well that advanced modern reactors have technology that make, you know, huge catastrophes like Chernobyl very unlikely. But also, you know, safety of nuclear reactors is partly a labor issue. And I had an interesting conversation um, with the head of the Sheet Metal Workers Union in Philly about various things related to just transition. And when it came to nuclear, one thing he pointed out is that, you know, uh, they're letting the infrastructure of nuclear plants deteriorate and that increases the likelihood of a disaster. But if they're maintained well, um, you can avoid that. And part of maintaining them well is also hiring more workers to do that work. So I'm not saying we shouldn't be aggressively developing wind, solar, and geothermal energy. We, sh we absolutely should. But the reality is we're dealing more and more with limiting the worst scenarios of climate change right now, not stopping it entirely. It's too late for that. So we're moving into a period where we may not get our ideal solution to this crisis. We need to at least consider these options and think about plans that are concrete, that are realistic and can get labor support because as we talk about a lot, we'll need labor's coalition in order to prevail. And, you know, on this point there, a few weeks ago or maybe about a month ago, there was a lot of um, excitement around the United Mine Workers in Virginia actually came out and supported a kind of just transition plan. Um, inside that plan, however, was support for carbon capture or storage, which is another very controversial issue within the environmental movement. And I bring that up just to say that, you know, we are increasingly have to look at what is a realistic option that's going to work quickly, or at least be able to make the case to unions like the mine workers of why that might not, might, uh, not be the best option. But what is the viable option that we are presenting? Um, so, Kay, I don't know what you think about all this. Again, I'm, I want to be clear. I'm not saying, like, let's just go nuclear. Let's just, you know, go go all the way with that. But, you know, I think Bhaskar's article was good because it really made me rethink some of my assumptions. And, like, you know, I just think we need to uh, hear out these ideas a little bit more. Yeah, no, totally. And I, I think, I mean, I, I think how you framed it right now was pretty fair. I'd like to think that Bhaskar framed it pretty fair, although... Uh, obviously, Boscar is our employer, so um, take that for what it is. But <laughs> I mean, I think I think there's three things that really socialists have to keep in mind when they're thinking about this. Um, 
they have to, of course, you have to hold on to certain principles of just like, uh, what, you know, how, how, are, how does our worldview make sense? What kinds of um, policies fit uh, a just, more egalitarian, more sustainable future that is to the benefit of working people? So principles one, uh, two, you know, our constituency on the left are workers and uh, especially organized labor. So how does organized labor approach this question? And that's not to say that the left and labor have to be, you know, one for one on everything. It's obviously it's it's going there's going to be differences and there's going to be disagreements. But um, the left has to, uh, I think, put greater priority into how labor is approaching these questions. And uh, and at the very least devise strategies around how do we actually speak with where workers actually are right now. Um, and then beyond that, I mean, I think it's, you know, we just, um, we should be mercenary about the actual technology, like that, uh, you know, obviously we need more wind and solar and tidal and hydro where we can expand that. Um, but uh, nuclear is uh, way safer than it, it you know, it's probably it's probably been safer than we've ever actually understood, but it's certainly much safer now because of the new technology. Uh, and so the, the the choices in front of us, if we are to survive climate change, I mean, the first choice is that we just don't, <laughs> which would be bad. And we should try <laughs> our best not to do that. Um, although it's not really us doing it. It's like it's us not being able to effectively mount a fight against the capitalists who are driving right. us over the cliff right now. But short of that, um, our options are, uh, it's either going to be some combination of uh, nuclear and hydro and wind and solar or coal and wind and solar for the reasons that you and Boscar have stated that you necessarily need some kind of energy, energy source that is stable, that um, isn't variable, meaning uh, you always have a consistent amount of, uh, of input from the energy source, whereas just kind of very obvious points. Like it, it's almost, it's seemingly too obvious that with uh, with wind, it's, you know, you have different patterns of wind. You have some days are really windy, some days are not as windy. With sun uh, or solar rather, you don't always have the sun directly shining on it. So, um, and at different intensities. So the point is that this is a variable energy source and a highly useful and necessary energy source but we're ne we're going to have to rely on one of these more stable energy sources that we can always guarantee a certain amount of power generation from just because we live in a modern economy and that's not going to change regardless of what the trajectory is so right. it really the option really is are we going to do wind solar and oil and and uh and coal or natural gas or are we going to do wind solar and nuclear mm -hmm. and I just right. don't see how there's any other choices.